do it after that. So while I'm here, we have difficult time getting up for Salat and Fajr. What was to stay up after Salat and Fajr as well? So with that said, Imam Al-Salaam entered into Kaaba one day. Says the Imam narrates this. He said, I turned into Kaaba with my father and Imam's servant by the name Afla. He said, as soon as I entered and first time Imam laid his eyes on the Kaaba, right? As you mentioned, when you go for the the scholars used to tell you to keep your eyes low. Lower your gaze until the first time you lay your eyes on the Kaaba. It's a sign. And keep this dua in your mind before you look at the Kaaba for the first time. And then make that dua and that dua will not be there. They're all told that. Imam lays his eyes onto Kaaba and Imam is forced to scream and weep out loud. Aflah said, shh, Imam, Imam, people are watching. Why are you weeping so loud? I wish you'd keep it down. You're Imam. Imam responded by saying, oh Aflah, I don't care what people are watching. My Rab is watching and he approves this action of mine. In front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said Imam went into sajda. When he, when he got up from sajda, the floor was all wet because of the tears that had come out. Oh. This is the Imam, this is the Ibadat of our fifth Imam, Imam Muhammad Ibadat. Allah. Allah. But that limits Ibadat only to praying and fasting and all this stuff. Imam was working. Like an ordinary man would work to put food on the table. In the middle of the day, in the heat of the day, Imam is working in a farm. First of all, Muhammad ibn Munkadar walks and sees Imam and uses this opportunity to taunt. He said to Ya Muhammad ibn if it was some Qurayshi leader or tribe, that would have been surprised. But you, out of all the people in the world who are known for his zuhud and his taqwa and his wara and whatnot, that so much love for the world has gotten into you that you're standing in the middle of the desert, in the middle of the day, in the heat, and you're doing this kishawarzi and this morning. Imam turned to him and said, uh, by God, uh, if in this condition I die, while doing this, uh, this will be considered to be shahadat in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. Because I'm doing something to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to earn risky halal so that I don't have to beg from people to go ahead and feed my family. And in the process of earning halal, if I die in the middle of this heat, then of course Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala considered this to be the best of the ibadah. So don't limit ibadah only to namaz and raza and salat and song and only this. Ibadat extends out to every action that is done in order to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if your life is taken in the middle of that action, then you are given the status of shaheed. Sallallahu alayhi wa